deal or how to handle North Korea ignores the fact we've really got a global threat here based on the cooperation between the two of them. And the mistakes we've made for 25 years in both cases about how to handle North, North Korea and Iran have brought us, brought us to this but, point. But you, why you're we making a case. very little time. You make a case in part to make a first strike against North Korea. Now, how, how do you imagine dealing with the fallout? But I imagine it has not been solved either. Last word yeah. on that, sir. Yeah, no, look, uh, she's absolutely right. And uh, the, the Iran nuclear deal was intended by the Obama administration not just to handle the nuclear threat, but to help change Iranian behavior more broadly. It has manifestly failed on both grounds. Uh, and as uh, Nikki Haley saying, imagine if this is the way they still behave on terrorism today, how will they behave when they have nuclear weapons? Thank you, sir. John Bolton, more to Thank come. You, These will not be solved tonight. Thank you for coming back. Here she is. The United States have reaffirmed their alliance as North Korea continues its nuclear and missile programs. Japan's Prime Minister and America's top military official met in Tokyo. I greatly appreciate that with regard to North Korea, President Trump is making it clear that he will take all necessary steps to protect America's allies in the region. I hope we will be able to further enhance the Japan-U.S. alliance. I can tell you that the nature of our bilateral relationship, particularly at the military, at the military level, is rock solid. Dunford said he hopes he can help deepen the alliance between Tokyo and Washington. He earlier met the head of Japan's self-defense forces. Dunford said North Korea poses a common threat to Japan and the U.S. I think we've made it clear uh, to North Korea and anyone else in the region that uh, an attack on one is an attack on both of us. And it's, uh, it's very important for the Turks. We want to reinforce our ballistic missile defense capabilities. We would appreciate U.S. cooperation for our plan. Dunford said the most important thing is to integrate the two countries' capabilities in that area. South Korea's president has laid out what he considers to be a red line in North Korea's nuclear and missile development. Moon Jae-in previously warned Pyongyang not to cross the line, but this is the first time he's defined what that is. The red line is where North Korea completes the development of its ICBM and mounts a nuclear warhead on the missile and weaponizes it. I think North Korea is getting close to the critical point. He says more provocations will be met with more sanctions, but he's adamant there will be no second Korean war and that any U.S. military action on the Korean peninsula must have consent from his government, even if President Trump threatens fire and fury. I think President Trump is putting pressure on North Korea by showing his resolute will. I do not believe that he is doing that with an intent to take military actions. Washington and Seoul are having sufficient dialogue on that. Nobody can choose to carry out military action without South Korea's consent. Moon added that North Korea's developments will be met with powerful sanctions, but the problem must ultimately be solved peacefully.
He says that's an international consensus and a view shared by American President Donald Trump. North Korea's recent intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile and other missile launches are unacceptable provocations and they must stop immediately. We agreed to bolster our alliance capabilities to deter and respond to North Korea's unacceptable behavior and other challenges to regional security. Moon was speaking at a news conference marking his first 100 days in office. A top Chinese military officer also says military means cannot be an option for dealing with North Korea. A vice chairman of China's Central Military Commission met the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff in Beijing. According to China's defense ministry, Fan Chanlong told Joseph Dunford dialogue would lead to a solution to issues on the Korean peninsula. Fan also said that the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system in South Korea has undermined mutual trust between China and the U.S. Beijing claims that the THAAD system's advanced radar could be used to monitor China's military. Dunford reportedly said he will work to deepen mutual trust between the countries. The top U.S. military officer continues his Asian tour this week. He arrives in Tokyo on Friday. We will remain vigilant against the North Korean threats through our military preparedness. The United States will honor our treaty agreements with Japan without reservation, whether time in times of peace or in the face of conflict. We will also cooperate to advance trilateral and multilateral security and defense cooperation with other partners in the region. And after assuming their positions, as you've heard, we've just completed warm and very productive, detailed conversations about the situation facing our nations, and we have achieved very highly useful results. First, of course, we never take alliances for granted, and what we've done is we've reaffirmed the trust between us. Second, we have deepened and broadened our combined military efforts by improving on our bilateral relations and exercises. As President Trump noted in February, the United States' commitment to defend Japan through the full range of military capabilities is unwavering. Under Article 5 of our Mutual Defense Treaty and the Extended Deterrent Commitment. As demonstrated by the UN Security Council resolution and the, by the ASEAN communique, the international community also recognizes North Korea is a threat to Asia and to the world. Japan and the Republic of Korea are on the front line against the North Korean threat. We in the United States recognize any confrontation with North Korea would pose an immediate danger to our allies and their populations. Today's meeting is a reminder that each nation gains security in concert with other nations. The international community is speaking with one voice. North Korea must stop its dangerous actions as we work to maintain security and denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. In light of the serious situation we face, we are accelerating implementation of the 2015 guideline for the U.S.-Japan defense cooperation and continuing to real. Our militaries are also cooperating in new ways, and you've heard several of them mentioned here already. This includes our emerging cooperation in such areas as space and counter space, cyberspace, as well as ballistic missile defense and maritime security. Together, we will deter and, if necessary, defeat any threat. Any initiation of hostilities will be met with an effective and overwhelming response. Our two nations will demonstrate the strength of our alliance by continuing those bilateral activities and by enhancing cooperation with the Republic of Korea. We call on North Korea to choose a better path than one of provocation and threat. Such a path is not in its own best interest nor in the best interest of any other nation. Certainly, uh, first, in response to CNN's earlier question, I, I can just assure you that in close collaboration with our allies, there are strong military consequences if DPRK initiates hostilities.